building a prayerful family of reconciled worshippers ready to serve, reaching out with the gospel of the kingdom and alleviating poverty. And, and, and so when we are doing ministry well, we can be able to say, Lord, the things you have sent us to do, here we are doing them. So I wanted to talk to you this morning shortly on a biblical pattern and measure of a God-restored woman. August, the world, our country is speaking to women and uh, everybody has an idea how women should be, what women should do. Some of it is good, a lot of it is not necessarily scriptural. And so this is the time, the reason also why Women of Wisdom was started in the year 2000. When we started, 1999, I said to Mama, this is the last year that we should not have as we're driving around on the 9th of August. This is the last year. It should be that there is no conference of women where we can encourage women on the godly principles of the word. Here's the reason. In 95, if I'm not mistaken, there was a conference in Beijing. How many of you are aware of that conference? It was a conference, a women's conference, an international women conference. It was a huge conference. It had such an impact globally. And one of the things about that conference was the threshing and killing of men. 90s already. What you saw in about six years ago, men are threshing, it was actually a ripple effect of something that was already pushing from Beijing in the 90s. There is a war that wants to dis, uh, destroy the family, destroy women. It's a self-destructive thing. The devil uses people to destroy them. So we need, as the world says its own things, we must know what the word of God says so that we are not swept away with the world but we hold on to the principles of God's word. Are we together so far? Now look at your neighbor and say, there's a war against you. There's a war against your mind. There's something that the enemy wants to do. And his great work on is deception. The first scripture reading will be John 10.10. 10. John 10.10, 10, if you can have it on the screen, let's read it out loud. So that you can hear the word of the Lord. I need you to hear yourself say it. And praise God. John chapter 10 and verses 10. A biblical pattern and measure of a God restored woman. Let's read out loud together. That is a first reading. Shall we all stand? Please read out loud. Go. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and life to its full. Life abundantly. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the reading of your word. Touch my lips and my mind and my heart. And every ear that is here be unable to hear and understand what your word is saying to us. Spirit of revelation, knowledge, and insight flow through us, we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Here are my thoughts. God is a good God. God is always beautiful, by the way. God is a good God. I said, God is a good God. God has already determined that good things are coming your way. It is a done deal for the rest of your life. It is recorded in his word and he will not lie. That as long as he's your shepherd, goodness and loving kindness will relentlessly pursue you all the days of your life. Just dwell in the house of God. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He said, his eye will be upon us to do us good. God is a good God. And when Jesus came to earth, 
the record of his life is summarized by Peter in Cornelius' house at 1038. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil for the Lord was with him. It is a done deal. God is good where he is goodness and mercy will be and where the anointing of God is good things will happen if you fail to hear anything today hear these words as long as you walk with God you are condemned to goodness the goodness of the Lord shall be with you for the rest of your life oh somebody shout aloud amen now God in his goodness has an enemy he's called diabolos he is called Satan. Satan means the accuser of the brethren. He accuses them day and night before God. By the way, he has a side thought. There is the grace of God and there's the wrath of God. They are active all the time. Any truth you obey gravitates you to the covering of the grace of God. You give, you give praise, you thank God, you pray. Any truth of God you obey, anything. You encourage somebody, you bless you. Any good thing that is the word of God that you obey, immediately grace begins to flow in your life. Any temptation you yield to by thought and by action, you move towards the wrath of God. They are active. Judgment is the only one that's going to happen in the end. There is an ultimate judgment of heaven. But there are active judgments of God upon peoples, individuals, families, institutions, regions, and nations. The Bible says in the New Testament, the sin of some people trails behind them. He says, but other people, their sin overtakes them to the place of judgment. So some people, even before long, their sin cuts them off. So at any given time, there is the grace of God and there is the wrath of God. Now, God is just. He cannot overlook sin. Satan uses that because when evil happens, when a principle is broken, Satan accuses the brethren before God, who is the righteous just day and night, and God cannot overlook sin. Are we together so far? Amen. I mean, we know in the early church, God, are we together so far? Amen. So God is a good God, but there is the active wrath of God. But the book of Thessalonians says, God has not appointed us. Where, where are my children? Thessalonians 5 verse 9. It must group Thessalonians 5. God has not appointed us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody shout aloud, Amen. Amen. So always remember that God is good. The devil, who's a thief, he comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He is an enemy of God. He is an enemy of all that which is good. Satan is the opposite of everything. that It's so easy to understand the devil. Any good thing you find in God, the opposite is true about the devil. God is love. Satan spews hatred. God is truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Satan is a liar and a deceiver. God is light. Satan is darkness. Everything that God is, Satan is opposed to. Somebody shout aloud, amen. amen. I said, somebody shout a precious amen. amen. Wow. With that in mind, I want you to come to the second thought. The second thought is that God is always building something good. Amen. Satan is out to destroy good things. But God always has a plan to rebuild. Amen. Amen. So you're looking at God's intent. Then Satan's interferences. And then God's intervention. 
There are interruptions because it's a fallen world. Satan comes to destroy. To destroy is so bad, when a thing is destroyed, you can't see the original plan and picture of how it was supposed to be. Destruction is that bad, and that's what Satan comes to do. He's always out. Satan intends always to destroy. God built a family. Built up things, carry treasure. God was going to bless the nations through the family, Adam and Eve. Satan broke that first woman and gained access to the world. So you realize that women are very important because once women are broken, Satan knows he has a doorway to the world. So that's why we've got to fight this battle and be sure of what we are doing. Notice that the first woman was broken and out of that sibling rivalry happened. In fact, very interesting. Eve was broken through deception. And sin came into the world. And look at the world, how it is today. But then sibling rivalry. In one day, she lost two sons. One to death, matter. The other to a curse. She lost the talk of family disaster. Yeah, there's another couple that God raised from the Ur of Chaldeans. Remember them? Remember them? Abram and Sarai. They came up to the promised land. And God uh, was going to bless the world. The families of the earth will be blessed through you. And indeed, he did bless them. But guess what? This great woman called Sarah. And it was a great woman. If she was a great woman. One day, just one day, she was broken. After all the good things she has done, Sarah was so good. She was, um, Sarah is one of the most understated women of the Bible. Because when people think of Sarah, they just think about the lady who laughed when the angel said, you have eyes. No, no, no. Sarah is a gigantic figure. There is no good Abraham without Sarah. Sarah was so powerful. That twice she saved Abram's life with her own life. Abram was afraid he would be killed. Talk about a beautiful woman in the 80s. He comes into Egypt and says, you are a beautiful woman. Ladies, if God can keep you beautiful in your 80s as old for all of us, somebody shall praise the Lord right there. In her 80s. She says, you are such a beautiful woman. If I come over there, they're going to kill me. Say you're my sister. And she agreed. And she was taken to Pharaoh. Because when they came in, indeed, Abraham's fears became real. The people of Egypt said, this woman is too beautiful. She deserves only to be with the king. They took her to Pharaoh's house to live with Pharaoh. To be one of the wives of and God preserved Sarah by faith. She saw the protection of God. She gave herself to preserve a man. Talk about greatness. She didn't have to do that. And Abraham did that twice. Abimelech as well. So Sarah is a powerful woman of faith. In fact, when she got into Abimelech's place, it was so powerful that God closed the wombs of everybody so that there was no life and nothing producing of people or animals. That was the power of Sarah's life and blessing. And she believed that all of these, one day she's lonely, one day she's feeling, I'm growing old, it's not happening. What would it, what would it matter if I just could give my slave, rent a womb, slave, just let her have children for my husband. She said, God promised him children. I'm unable to, obviously, I'm a failure. All the things that the devil was speaking to her, she was not a failure. She was a great woman. But that lonely moment, how many of you know those lonely moments when the devil tells you all the wrong things and for some reason you begin to believe them, the wrong things about yourself. And she believed that she was worthless and she could not be able to help. And so she decided to make a plan. And that plan is why we have problems today. 
sibling rivalry. Ishmael, Isaac, that's Arabs and Jews, Palestinians are Arabs. We're having the world fighting the first child, the firstborn who is Isaac. Are we together so far? The woman broken, the world gets to be a problem place. And yet these are women of faith. Satan is out to break women, but God is going to rebuild us in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout a loud amen. amen. All right. So how do broken women look like? They are removed from truth. They are removed from pattern. Deception is a tool of, of destruction. It was removed from truth. Sarah was removed from truth. Women in Jeremiah's time, I don't have the time to get into that, they were removed from truth. But God is up to building up the woman. And thank God, women are being built in the presence of God. There are many builders, they are approved. Are they approved? When you're going to build a house or build something that's important, a penal beta, you want to be sure that they have a certificate to do what they do. Of another law will give you problems when they build. I saw a meme the other day uh, of a wall ecoso. They are clear cause put it up for I how we have a court is a bad is a plastery. You can't do a plastic when you're going to build, you want to be sure whoever is building knows what they are doing. Someone shout aloud, Amen. So God is big on pattern. He said to Moses, see to it that you build according to the pattern I showed you. Whose pattern did you see? Ladies, I'm talking to you now. Whose pattern did you see? Whose pattern are you cutting your womanhood after? Are you just following the trends or are you following the word of God? So we need to be aware of that because whatever you build, when, when, when something is built up, it carries treasure. Nor and family were saved not by some more greater faith. Yes, they had great faith. But they were saved because their faith made them build. It's a process that they build an ark. Once that ark was built, when the rains came, the thing kept them free. We are building something in the name of Jesus that is going to help you and your children and your children's children if the Lord does not come in our lifetime. Somebody shout praise the Lord. Ah, somebody say praise the Lord. How do we see then a woman who is wise, a woman who is being rebuilt by God, a woman who is a pattern of scripture, Proverbs 14, and verses 1. I promised not to be long, but if you say amen little, I'll know that you want me to continue. When you say amen louder, I'll know that you're enjoying it. When you say loudest, I'll be blessed and then I'll finish quicker. <laughs> so you have a choice. Praise God. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. Please read it out loud. I want you to hear because it's Women of Wisdom Conference and this is very important for us to hear. Go! The wise, are you the wise women? And all, even though it's for, for the women, the gents, we are all people of wisdom, right? Go. The wise woman builds her house. So she's a builder. But with her own hands, the foolish one tears hers down. Say, I'm a builder. I'm a wise person by the grace of God. The wisdom of a builder. Builder builds something that can carry good things. The worst thing, Noah. When the Lord Jesus took his disciples to the northern part, past Galilee, to a place called Caesarea Philippi, over there, there was an altar. An altar where they put on babies and pigs and they sacrificed to God and to spirits Jesus took them to that place and when they were standing over there that place was called the gate of hell because altars are gates as we heard the other day 
there is a portal, there is an access point, there is a door over every altar. When they make an altar at Sandy or wherever, and they speak your name and the names of others, they are opening up a door for spirits to enter your space. And so these people, they were always doing sacrifices over there and opening up a door for spirits to enter into that region. It was demonized and they called it the gate of hell. The powers and the forces of Gehenna and Hades. They knew that they could connect with the powers of darkness and that we have power to do whatever on earth they want to do. And Jesus took his disciples to the space and asked them, who do people say that I am? Ah, and some said you are John the Baptist. Some said you are Elijah. Some said you are one of the prophets. And he asked them, who do you say that I am? And Simon said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus, flesh and blood has not revealed that to you, but my father who is in heaven. The moment Jesus said that, then he said, and upon this rock, this revelation, I will build my church and the gates of hell, the forces of these sacrifices, these wicked spirits shall not prevail against it. I have come to tell you that he has not stopped building his church. We are part of the church that he is building and by the grace of God, there may be forces of darkness. South Africa may be filled with altars of Gehenna right now and people sacrificing to all sorts of other things, celebrating or spirits of our God and all of those, but we stand to say he is the rock and upon this rock we are building and we are being built on the foundations of the apostles and prophets and by the grace of God we will not be moved we will not be shaken though the devil tries Jesus said he's doing it himself he will build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it there are three levels of warfare three spirits categories Jesus when he came to earth he was born on earth and the Bible says he when he went he had to hear, he, the book of Ephesians says, never say who's going to go to heaven to bring him down or to the underworld to bring him up. Because Jesus has fulfilled all the three levels, earth and above, the heaven above us and the place below. Those were the places that Adam lost. Now, when we fight, most of us are used to this. We wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers of wickedness in high places. There are spirits over regions that are a problem. Thank God we have power over them. There's a spirit, just like in the time of Daniel, when he said, the prince of Persia, the angels of the prince of Persia would help me for 21 days. There's a prince over there called South Africa. There's a prince that's called by a political party over there. There are princes by a political party. Somebody shout amen. amen over there. They watch and they manipulate things on earth. Then just like in a fighting troop, there is the forces which are the air force. Then there's the ground troops, your soldiers who are ground troops. Three, there is the marine forces. And same thing. We have spirits over our land that must be kept in check by the word of God. Then there are ground spirits which possess people are called demons. But there's an underground force the Lord Jesus told us about. And its one mission is to destroy the church. Is it any wonder that when they close the church around COVID that we should not gather? When the church came up, Sangomaism was the loudest. Why? It's an underground force that is afraid of the gathering of the saints of God. But the Bible says, upon this rock, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. So lift up your hands and say, Lord Jesus, we are being built in you. We will make it through. 
Amen. Here are seven non-negotiables of a builder woman or a builder, and then I will be, I will be gone. I'll just mention them. I won't say too much on them so that I can let you go. Seven non-negotiables. If something is going to be built, if it is a house, if it's going to be built and be strong, these are seven non-negotiables. Number one, buildings need prepared ground. Rubble-free, cleared ground. Say the ground. I will say the ground. God is building his church. What is there in the ground of your heart? the ground of your life that could mess up with the building. God said to Jeremiah, I have called to nations to uproot, to tear down, to build and to plant. You can't build on uneven rubble. There must be a clearing of the ground. Grab some of amen. Lift up your hands and Lord Jesus, my heart, my life, help me, oh God, to be good ground. In Jesus' name. Number two, a builder needs a plan. If you're going to build, the Lord, uh, the scripture says that God said to Moses, see to it that you build according to the pattern I have shown you. Many of us have been listening to talk show, to soapy, to uh, whoever else commentator, uh, 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 influencer on how to be the women we or men we should be. No, no, no. The plan of your womanhood is in the word of the Lord. A woman of wisdom is a builder of her own house. Somebody shall praise the Lord. Number three, buildings need a budget. Now, I have these scriptures. I'll forward these notes because of time. Builder needs a budget. The Lord Jesus says, who when wants to rise a tower does not first sit down and calculate the cost and see if they cannot finish. There are many people who did not take the time. Womanhood is a prized thing. Womanhood is a glorious thing. It needs you to say, I want to be that kind of a woman. You can see the plan. And then Lord help me to collect whatever is necessary materials to build myself to be that person. Character materials to build myself. Somebody shout hallelujah. All right. And then number one, two, three, four. Buildings need expertise, skill. The Bible says when the X is dull, more strength is needed. But with skill comes success. Look at your neighbor say, I don't to be a beautiful, powerful woman. Praise God. Find another neighbor who wants to talk to say, I do to be a beautiful, all-rounded, godly woman. Anybody can be anything. The Vini woman can be any day. It takes skill, it takes beauty, it takes expertise to build up a well-built woman. Number one, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, you need tools to build. I would say tools to build. One of the builder's tools is a plumb line or a derbas or a water, what do you call it? What do you call it? Spirit level. Because if you don't stick to the right level, is our course all into your car. There are many people who are just putting from things and they are not finding out on the spirit level of the spirit of God and the word of God. You need the tools. You need scaffolding to be able to climb and get this thing right. Number six, every building, non-negotiable, if it's going to stand, it has to have a firm foundation. Before you can build up, you must build down. Foundations are not at all negotiable. And people can build without foundations. People can. We have in the scriptures two men, one wise and one foolish one. They both built. The house did stand, but only temporary. The Bible says, and the winds blew. 
and the rains came and the floods rose. Not just pressure came from the sides, came from above, came from below. There are times when life has pressures from every side, but it is the house that's built on a firm foundation that will stand. Somebody shout a loud amen. Uh, number seven, these are non-negotiables. Uh, the seventh one is, if you want to build, you need patience. The Bible says it's line upon line, precept upon precept, a little here, a little there. That is why we encourage women and men, young and old, to be there in the local church, to be there in Bible study, to be there in the prayers, because every service is another line. And another prayer, another prayer is another line. A little here, a little there, this thing is building. If you're looking at a building and you're passing, it looks like it's static. And you're working on it, it doesn't look like it's going far. But if you pass again another week, you realize the wall is rising. You pass another month, the walls have risen. You pass another day, the windows are being put together. It takes patience, but the one thing for sure is that it has to keep, keep working on it and keep working on it. Somebody shout hallelujah. How many of you have ever been to Kappa by bus? You went to Cape Town by bus. And you went through the Karoo. How many of you know that there are times you sleep and you wake up and feel like you're in the same place? And it feels like that sometimes in the building process. You feel like it's as if we are just in the same place. We are going nowhere. But I have to let you know that we are not where we were. We may not be where we want to be yet, but we are moving. Slowly, by the grace of God, surely we are going somewhere. But And God is going to help us to accelerate. There shall be speed again. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now the last one, the last one. As we begin, uh, because you know, I wanted to be sure that I give you all this material before we go on. In that issue of groundbreaking, I'll give you seven, isn't it? In that issue of ground preparation, since Adam worked from negative balance, there are things that fell before we came. There are dilapidations. So, in the rubble removal, and I'm going to pray with you, the clearing of trees, some roots may interfere with foundations. Bitter roots of idolatry. That two ones. I'm going to pray with somebody. Deuteronomy 29, verse 18. What was that? We must build. We are building, building lives. When we started, God said to me, You build people, and people will build buildings. Build people. Man is to build people. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 29, verse 18. So we're building people. Deuteronomy chapter 29. Verse is 18. Let's clear the rubble. Now I'm going to pray in just a moment. Praise God. Ah, go. Read loud. Make sure there is no man or woman, clan or tribe among you today whose heart turns away from the Lord our God to go and worship the gods of those nations make sure there is no such root among you that produces that bitter poison. What was that? It's called bitter poison. What does poison do in a body? It overruns your system and gets to the heart and destroys you. Do not mix your worship with anything that comes from the altars of the dead. I am speaking to the church of God in 2024. There's a problem that the church of God has been invaded by the bitter poison where people have moved away from God to go back to altars of darkness. If you have already been gone over there, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I say take the rebuke of God. Get 
your money out of there. Get your name out of those altars. Get yourself out of there because if you don't, bitter poison will find your heart. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Debate on these things. The Bible says, wide is the road and go big is the gate that leads to destruction and there are many who walk in it. But narrow is the way and what little is the gate that leads to life and there be few who find it. You are already blessed to be called part of the few. Don't you move out of that. Get out of it. Yes, it was a Christmas book. Don't love your family at the expense of your soul because you're not loving them. You are destroying them. They must see there's a distinction between those who fear God and those no, no, no. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 